so we talked about this section, um, iron conversion table. I hope you're kind of a bit bit happier with it now. Yes. Yeah. Because so you're converting between uh, the amount that you have. You're going to ferrous iron, and then you're doing kind of the equivalent. Um, for instance, if you're just taking one tablet, two hundred milligram, you'd get sixty-five milligrams of ferrous iron. Yeah. If they wanted to change you over to ferrous gluconate, well, one tablet only contains thirty-five. I need a little bit more, so I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna double it up. So basically, two tablets of ferrous gluconate equals one tablet of ferrous fumarate, approximately. That yeah. question is quite common. Um, you need to know these off by heart. All of these. Um, yeah. I there's a mnemonic here. The rhythm nearly proved contagious, but I I remember it via train on PC. I don't know why. T R N P C. So T is thiamine. Uh, B two is riboflavin. T R N niacin is B three. Then B six is P pyridox pyridoxine. Actually, yeah. have a comma there. Um, and then you don't need really need to remember these two. They're not that popular. But cyanocobalamin is quite quite useful. Why yeah. would someone have a vitamin deficiency of vitamin B? Anemia. Mm -hmm. What is it called? Megaloblastic or whatever, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but there's another one. Um, alcoholics. So alcoholics um, tend to have l low vitamin B. Yeah. I think it's something to do with their um, their liver or something. Um, you need to know all of these vitamins, which we talked about, didn't we? Yeah. Um, it's a boring table, but it's kind of useful. Um, okay. At the moment, what's really popular? Where does vitamin D come from? Sun. Yeah. I mean, that's that's super important. At the moment, lots of people are uh, coming, going to doctors, <clears throat> and saying. Oh, I'm really tired. Uh, oh, it says it there about sunlight. Um, I'm really tired, and then they do blood tests. It actually happened to me. I got really tired, and then they did blood tests, and I had really low vitamin D, and they just prescribed right. it for me. It's quite quite a popular thing at the moment. Um, you need to know your minerals. This very rarely comes up, though. As long as you know, like, iron and calcium and sodium, you'll be all right. Um, we talked about a little bit about musculoskeletal, about uh, the different pain. Um, do you know much about gout? Uh, it's a buildup of uric acid. Where? In the joint. Which joint? You can get it in your fingers and toes. Yeah, usually in your big toe. You can get it in your hands as well. Yeah. Uh, just quite painful. But one thing you've got to keep in mind is this bit. <clears throat> um, is that you can't give... Uh, if someone comes in to your pharmacy and you're do dealing over the counter and they say, oh, I've got this really bad pain in my big knuckle um, or in my, in my big toe, yeah. immediately as a, as a... You know, if you jump in the deep end, you'll be like, oh, well, it's musculoskeletal. So one of the best painkillers would be an NSAID, wouldn't it? Like ibuprofen yeah. or diclofenac, Voltarol. However, it's contraindicated in um, in people who have gout. So if you see that, you've got to keep that in mind. That's quite a good OTC thing. Could be a question. What? Sorry, what was contraindicated in those that have gout? NSAIDs. Right. So aspirin, diclofenac. Yeah. Really important for for acute exacerbations. So if it's chronic, okay. you can still give it, but if it's acute, then it, it's not not good. So you can't do it over the counter. No. For for acute, you can't for acute episodes. How would you know if it's acute or chronic over the counter? Well, acute 
it, acute would be like, I just woke up this morning and it's really, really bad. Whereas chronic is going to be like, oh, I've been having this pain for for a couple of weeks now. Right. Or it's okay. it's been pre-diagnosed by a doctor and they're, they're already on kind of maintenance. It's just for those people who have just kind of, they didn't they don't know that they've got gout and it's in that knuckle that kind of makes you think, yeah. you know, it is gout. Okay. Um, the eye, what do you know about eyeballs? Tell me, what is an eyeball? What is an eyeball? <laughs> That's so random. <laughs> What what it's your what? Eye socket. It's your eyes. Very good. Very good. What 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 things do you see in the pharmacy that um, affect the eye? What conditions? Yeah. Give me two. Give me two juicy ones. Conjunctivitis. Yeah. Which is what? It's the bacterial infection. Yeah. How do you tell if someone's got conjunctivitis? Is it sticky yellow eyes? Yeah. One other symptom. Give me. Uh, red eyes exactly okay um the sticky one is a good one because um one question that keeps up coming up in the exam is a patient comes in and tells you that she woke up and her eyelids were stuck together yeah yeah that is you know alarm bells for con conjunctivitis okay yeah. Do you remember we were talking about coughs and we were saying if the cough, if when you're producing mucus, it's green, what does that mean? There's an infection. What type of infection? Bacterial infection. Bacteria. And you'd probably give what antibiotic? Well, the doctor. Clarithrom clarithromycin. clarithromycin yeah. yeah okay so uh, but what if the cough is clear what if the mucus that's coming out is colorless then they don't have an infection no it's probably a viral infection but you can't treat it right yeah similarly okay. and similarly with the eye okay so if the eye is stuck together and the the pus, the exudate that's coming off it is um, uh, colourful, you know, white yeah. or yellow, then it's probably bacterial. But if it's clear, if it's just running and it's clear, it's probably a viral infection. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so two main symptoms of an eye infection is redness, um and secondly is this kind of like stickiness um so you've got to keep an eye out for that in those questions yeah. um what but why would you give um chloramphenicol ointment opposed to chloramphenicol drops <laughs> What's the difference between an ointment and a drop? Uh, drops are more liquid. Yeah. Uh, ointment is semi-solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the thing with the drops is they're good because, well, pharmaceutically, an ointment is an oil, isn't it? It's made out of an oil. Yeah. Um, so an ointment is an oil, a cream is a mix of water and oil, whereas a gel is purely aqueous. It's good to remember yeah. that. It's good to remember that. So if you put an oil in your eye, yeah. what what's going to happen? It will sit on the surface. It will sit on the surface, yeah. What if then you put in an ointment and then you go driving and then you've got this oil sitting on your eye? Yeah. So if a patient comes into me, they've got an eye infection and they're like, I'm about to do, you know, a drive to Scotland or something. Yeah. I do not give the chloramphenicol ointment. No. Because it can blur the vision. It can be a bit sticky. It's not very nice. So I, I tend to give the drops. What do you know? So when, Go on. Sorry. When would you give the ointment over the drops that... 
<clears throat> well, 90, 90% of the time, because um, the ointment is, although it's got an oil in it, it, as you said, it like stays in the eye. Yeah. Um, so it lasts longer. The problem with the drops is when you put the drops in, if you look at your eye really, really closely, there's a yeah. little dot just right in the corner. And what that is, is it's like a draining mechanism, like sewage. So right. if you put anything in your eye, it actually, if it's liquid, it'll go into your you station tube and then drop into your stomach and it will just go away. So if you're putting in drops, it doesn't stay there. Right. So to be honest, they're a bit crap. Secondly, chlorophenicol drops need to be kept in the fridge. Yeah. So ointment all the way, 90% of the time. However, if I give it out, I go, you know, this may blur your vision. So if you're driving, it's not fully, you know, fully recommended. Okay. All right. I'll bear that in mind in future because in my pharmacy, we always tend to give drops as opposed to ointment. Yeah, but the drops are a lot less effective because when you put them in, they just drain into your, that you're pretty much swallowing it. Right. And it works topically. It doesn't work systemically. Right. Yeah, it's a good thing to know, actually. Okay. Um, so that's, that's chlorinfinical. They love to ask questions about that. Um, right. There are other kind of eye drop stuff. Glaucoma's a good thing to know. What's glaucoma, Kieran? It's like high pressure in the, in the eye. eye. Yeah, which is diagnosed by an optometrist. So, and that knowing these three things is kind of good to know. Um, yeah. The tanaprost is a prostaglandin analog, beta blockers, yeah, parasympathosymmetric. So, 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 I can't even say that. It's a Sunday. I'm not even going to say it. Um, so if you know those three, you're in, you're in good standing. Okay. Um, skin. We talked about malathion, didn't we? Yeah. What's what's the most popular? What's the most clinically effective lice treatment? Dimethicone. Very good. Whereas malathion and permethrin are. Um, insecticides so yeah yeah it doesn't matter with that um this won't be on the exam but what's the best thing for scarring fire oil <laughs> yay <laughs> okay so clinically proven is actually something called uh, silica gel right uh, there's a product called dermatix and that's got that's got actual documentation of like it actually works but then secondly um, isotretinoin, which is a vitamin A derivative, is extremely good as well. Right. But I think you can only, it's only on prescription, so, and I don't think it's licensed. Um, is that for acne scarring, is it? Not specifically, it's for, for any, um, any scarring. Isotretinoin, the license in the UK is for, um, the license is for acne, not the scarring, just for acne. Right. Um, scarring is a bit funny. They don't like it on the NHS because they're like, well, why should we pay for it? Yeah. Um, we talked about suitable quantities, which is really boring. I bet you get one question like that. They like to yeah. ask that. Oh yeah, and this is the corticosteroid potency. Beta methadones are actually quite um, potent. Visit pharmacycpa.com for the full video series. As always, for more information, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, join our free PCPA course, join our Facebook group, or subscribe to our blog.